Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Red Circle, also the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. We have more than just heat content there. Follow Messi, the Dolphins, the Panthers, the Marlins, the Hurricanes, and more. Also, check out Off the Floor. That's where you get texts directly to your phone from Brady, Alex, Greg, and myself. Bypass Twitter, X, Instagram, Facebook, Threads. Pinterest, I don't even know what's out there anymore, but you can get this directly to your phone. Again, you'll get special Q&As, prize picks, contests, behind-the-scenes information, little tidbits before we put it on Twitter. Check it out at winnow.app backslash off the floor. That's winnow.app backslash off the floor. Thanks to our 800 subscribers already. Let's get that over 1000 It's $3.05 per month. Also, check out the great sponsors of the 5 Reasons Sports Network. That includes Better Edge. Use the code 5RSN, get $20 to play. Why is this legal? And it's legal in 45 states, including the state of Florida, because you're betting against others who use it. You're not betting against the app or a bookie, so you got nothing to be ashamed of, and you're going to get your money. It's based in Minneapolis, not outside the country. So check them out, betteredge.com. This is the legal way to play, betteredge.com. Use the code 5RSN. And now, down today's- to this game. Yay. Yeah. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Check the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick on the Five Reasons Sports. I got Brady Hawk. You can follow me at Brady Hawk 305 and Alex Toledo. You can follow me at Tropical Blanket. Make sure you check out our last couple episodes, including one we just did on Dame Lillard and how he might age now that he's 33. We made comparisons, tried to put it into some kind of perspective, and maybe got some of you straight here again in terms of actually wanting to get him because we feel like some of you are backing off as this takes a longer period of time. Of course, we will do more Dame episodes as we go forward until the situation is resolved. My belief is eventually it will be resolved. But right now, we're going to deal with the roster as it is and as it might be. We've done these two-track episodes all offseason. So what we're going to do, speaking of two tracks, we're going to get into two players. And we're going to talk about what we like with certain combinations or maybe what won't work with certain combinations on this team. And again, some of it is with Dame and without Dame. There's no way to get around it. Brady, this was your idea. So I'm going to let you start. What is a two-man combination you're excited to see play this year that maybe not everybody would pick out of the hat first? I think an obscure one that I think could be really interesting is Jay Rich and Jimmy. Uh, I think there's a couple of reasons why. I think there's the two-way aspect. I think the fact of there's a little bit of intrigue, I guess, how they would be utilized offensively together just because we obviously have never seen them play together. Last time Jay Rich was in a Miami Heat jersey, he was playing more of the Jimmy role in terms of on-ball stuff, the mid-range stuff, the attacking stuff. Well, now it's going to be more spot-up stuff and playing off of Jimmy. And I actually think they're going to be a really interesting – offensive kind of complement for each other. I think they actually complement each other's games well, uh, just with the way they move and the way they play and the way they slash. Like I just imagine a lot of Jimmy kind of on ball with, with Jay Rich slashing off ball and getting backdoor cuts. Like a lot of that type of stuff I think could be good. But then there's the defensive side of things where I look at a guy that Jimmy no longer even has to even think about guarding in a regular season, most of these opposing guards. Like I think about Caleb's done it, Gabe's done it. But now it's like Jay Rich is going to guard a lot of these elite guards in the NBA in the regular season. Caleb's going to get – would get a little bit of those reps as well. Uh, but I'm looking back. I was looking back at just a lot of Richardson defensive clips and stuff, and it's like that's a guy that is, stays at the, attached at the hip around screens. Like he is not going anywhere on most of these screens when a ball handler's coming off a pick and roll. And what's the thing that Jimmy likes to do most? He likes to play off ball and kind of hit passing lane. So it's like I think defensively they're a perfect – complement for each other and offensively i guess we'll see how it's utilized but i i don't know i think that's just a different one that that could be interesting this season it's funny about that of course is they were traded for each other uh and also there were even comparisons made including by certain podcast hosts uh of whether or not jay rich could actually become a jimmy butler like player someday that didn't happen there was a ceiling on that who's uh, the podcast ha- host yes i don't i don't know that podcast host uh even though he's speaking right now um but uh 
di- different players in terms of mentality, I think, more than, more than anything else. And, and that's what elevates Jimmy in a lot of different ways. But I do think, obviously, defensively, they're going to complement each other offensively as well. Um, Alex, a uh, quick thought on that one. And then uh, what would be another sort of abs- maybe one that maybe not everybody would think of? Well, um, I actually thought it was uh, great by Brady to bring that up. And another way that I thought about that, you know, we could see them being used on the offensive side, you know, together is, and this is stuff we've seen for years, obviously, is if a team wants to kind of put, you know, one of their worst defenders, they want to hide someone on Josh Richardson. I think we could see plenty of Jay Rich screening um, while Jimmy has the ball just to try to get that, you know, that switch, that matchup. If it is a team that's going to switch that, um, we could definitely see that. And yeah, I think that it's going to be fun defensively. And um, just kind of to that same uh, angle, I was thinking of Bam and Josh. And I don't, that's not really an obscure one, but that's just the one that immediately came to my mind when, you know, you guys brought up this exercise, just because we've seen them play together before. Obviously, um, those guys love each other. They're great friends. All that stuff, I think, comes into play when you're trying to um, integrate somebody who hasn't been here in years, but who was here for years, right? And who played with Bam before. So I think it's going to be a pretty seamless one. I think they're going to be pretty great on the defensive end together. And it's, you know, similar way we were talking about him and Jimmy, but offensively, like I remember when Josh was here and he had to do a lot more of the ball handling stuff. We know he's not going to be in that same role, but I think there is some upside between their kind of uh, two man game on the offensive side of the floor. I think, Josh has a little bit of that. He won't be getting a ton of those types of reps, but I think like second side of the floor, maybe the defense is already bent. He catches and and, and goes off the bounce. And, um, you know, Bam screening for him, I, I think he did a pretty good job before of finding him. I, I, I think that's going to be a pretty good two-man combo for them on the offensive side of the floor as well. All right, so I'm going to do kind of the chain link thing here. Where I'm going to take one guy that you guys uh, give me, and then I'll throw another one in with him so let me stick with the bam theme here and i know some of this is dependent obviously on a potential trade but i want to see bam and jovich together like if if they're if jovich is going to be here we talk about the perfect four next to bam that is what they drafted jovich to be and you talk about what you want next to bam well you don't need an elite defender obviously but you need somebody who's at least going to be positionally able to hold up i think we saw that uh, with Jovic when he played last year, and I expect him to be better now with the year in the Heat system. But to me, it's the playmaking and the spacing next to Bam. And you look at that, and you look at what, what Spolster was able to do with, say, P.J. Tucker. I mean, you're talking about a skill set here in Jovic that is off the charts better than P.J. Tucker's. They had to force feed that thing, and then P.J. went back to Philadelphia and turned right back into what he was. Jovic won't be standing in the corner all the time just waiting, although we saw, obviously, we've seen it with Serbia, that he can spot up, he can make those threes, he can find that space, but it's all over the floor. It's at the top, it's at the wings, it's at the elbows, uh, it's going to be in the corners as well. Uh, but just them able to move seamlessly, the actions that they can run with each other, the handoffs that they can run with each other, with two guys of that size, the ability of both guys to be able to get the ball off the rim and go, and get into quick offense together, which I think is going to lead to some two-man game stuff that they can do. Um, I, I Look, this is going to be one of these things that if Jovic is still here, with or without Dame, and obviously if, he, if Dame comes, there's about a 50% chance, I think, that Jovic is not here, maybe even a little greater than that. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of calls because for him to play with Bam, for sure. And that's whether Caleb starts with Bam or Heisman starts with Bam, and especially, though, if Kevin Love starts with Bam. And I think this is why. I think... Kevin Love is going to be in an interesting position this year where I think everybody appreciated what he did after some bumpy stuff early. The numbers with him and Bam together at the beginning were not very good, got better as they went. And then there was more of an appreciation for what Kevin was doing in the locker room and also, you know, what he was providing on the floor. But fans get tired of the guy that they've seen. And so I can just see this season, like if if Kevin has some games, he doesn't shoot the ball particularly well, is not especially impactful going to be a lot of calls for Jovic to get those minutes ahead of him uh, because I, I think we all kind of see what that can be. And plus the age matchup here, you have a young veteran in Bam and you have a younger player developing with him and you can see the two of them becoming a core front court. Again, if Jovic is here going forward, that's the, that's the thing that I want to see. Um, that means I'm going to leave Brady next after the break with either Bam or Jovic that you've got to tie in somebody with one of those two. So we'll go that way. Uh, as we go forward, we do want to mention our friend Lynette. She's a celebrity in town now. Seriously, everybody knows her. It's like 
the Five Reasons uh, insurance agent and also a huge Miami Heat fan. Reach out to her at Aggressive Insurance Agency, insurancebylanette.com. Two N's, two T's, 954-581-8800, insurancebylanette.com. Your life insurance, your car insurance, your renter's insurance, your homeowner's insurance. Lynette can provide all of it for you with a smiling face, and she'll also tell you why you're wrong about the heat. She tells me why I'm wrong about the heat on the streams. Insurancebylanette.com, 954-581-8800. Also check out Prize Picks. Use the code 5. The FIBA props, the, the basketball props, I don't know, is this the best team in the world? I guess you have to ask the track star. Go to prizepicks.com. Use the code 5, F-I-V-E. Download the app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Use that code 5 to get that initial deposit matched up to $100. Like I mentioned, the FIBA props are up the night before. These games are really early, so get in early. It's a lot of really easy pickings there if you want to make some quick money. Also, also, check out the NFL futures are on there, and also all the first regular season games. Props are up. Most of the key players are up there as well. So go to prizepicks.com. Use the code 5, F-I-V-E. All right, Brady, your turn. Yeah, so I'm glad you went to Bam and Jovich just because I don't know if they're obscure, but I think that's like the ones that the fans are most looking forward to. And I'm glad you hinted it so because there was some stuff that they were doing yesterday in that game that Jovich was doing where I was like imagining Bam being in the spot. There was a play where he like got doubled going to the rim and threw like a little pitch back to the elbow and the big man hit a little jumper. And I'm like, that's something that Jovich and Bam would be doing uh, in a Miami Heat offense. But to kind of play off of, I guess, one of those two, we're thinking of ones I guess we haven't really seen. I'm going to go back to one that we have seen. How about Duncan and Bam? Because I think this is a scenario with Dame, without Dame, whatever circumstance, Duncan's going to be a major role player in this Miami Heat rotation this season. And I think there was all this talk about the fact that Duncan was kind of restricting Bam in a way because he was always looking around for Duncan. That's thrown out the window now. Like, I think we're, we're past that point. I, I don't think that we're going to, you're going to put him next to him and all of a sudden Bam's going to not be looking to be aggressive or scoring. Like, th this is now a guy like we've seen in the playoffs. They just click, they know where each other are on the floor. Uh, and you're looking at a team without much shooting, that without with losing some of the guys that they have, you're going to need Duncan to kind of play off in those spots. And I thought some of the stuff that they were doing in the playoffs, it wasn't strictly handoff shot. It was like backdoor cut layup. It was back to Bam for this, for lobs to Bam. Like Duncan might be the best lob thrower on this Miami team, which says a lot about the <laughs> roster, but it says also some good things about Duncan because I think he's actually really good in that region, just in those little two-on-ones. So I think Duncan and Bam's going to be a really big two-man game this season. I don't know if it'll be 2020 level, but I think it's going to be kind of really important to what they do offensively. And again, that assumes Duncan is here, which we we uh, we don't right. know for sure. So as we go forward here, all right. But playing the game here, Alex, uh, you got to build on either Duncan or Bam now. <laughs> so. It's. I had like a whole thing that I wanted to go to, and now I have to switch it up. Game, that's not how the game I book. embedded five minutes ago works. So go go. Okay. All right, how about this? I'm gonna. This wasn't gonna... on the show sheet that I never never provide. Go ahead. <laughs> so what I was gonna do anyways was was a complete cop out. So I'm just gonna add to the cop out by saying, Jimmy with insert front court player here that isn't Bam Adebayo because no, I was gonna you do... can't do that. You can't. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You gotta take I you gotta take Bam or Duncan and detach somebody to them. Hold on, because Duncan is a front court player. So no, uh, uh, he is originally. since when? Yeah, I mean he's a three at worst. He's a <laughs> optimistically a four <laughs> since he can't really be guarding threes. But um, no, in in reality, what I wanted to do was kind of we've seen Jimmy with the backup fives before. So I was gonna I was gonna do Jimmy and Thomas Bryant. And then while I was thinking about that, I started thinking about Jimmy and Kevin Love because that was kind of a whole thing. Right. So I'm like, I think Jimmy and Thomas Bryant is going to be a low key one. I think Jimmy and Kevin Love is going to be continued um, from what we saw last season where Love is at the five and you got you get those spaced out lineups with Jimmy attacking the rim. And then if you want to include Duncan here, you know, we've seen plenty of Duncan screening for Jimmy in the past. So obviously, the two man game between Duncan and Bam is what you want to focus on. And I do. I agree with Brady. He's going to be I think he's going to be like a staple in this rotation in whichever version of this team. If he is still on the roster, I think they're, they're going to use him even if it isn't, you know, the same degree they used him before. But just in general, I think those types of groups with, you know, when Bam is sitting, um, they're going to have a lot of spacing now. Like they have different options that they can go to, um, whether big or small, to space out the floor for Jimmy to attack. And I think, um, you know, since Jimmy has gotten here, they've gotten a lot of offense out of units like that, especially those first couple of seasons when they had, you know, Kelly and Myers um, as guys who could stretch the floor uh, for Jimmy. And it was just you know, easy offense for him. And 
they kind of did it for through, throughout the entire finals in the bubble, right? So I think, you know, just kind of, again, cop-out answer completely. But Jimmy with insert front court player here who won't be starting. All right, so he's disqualified, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to move around here. Uh, so I guess I could grab Jimmy, though, because uh, you, you – You grab you, anybody that's not – Yeah, no, you have a lot of options to grab. I, I have a lot of options. I'll, I'll, <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a good teammate, so I'm, I'm doing yeah, it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, I'll go I'll go with Jimmy here, and, and look, there's the cop-out answer is, the you know, the guy from Portland who might come. Uh, so I won't go to that. Uh, I actually want to say – I want to say Jimmy and Caleb. Um, even though I think that in most scenarios, Caleb is going to be – a six man. Um, I think that's the way that this ultimately plays out. Although I think there's also a possibility if they got Dame and were able to keep Tyler, that Tyler wants to be here so bad. I think they might be able to convince him to go back to that role. And we, we've gotten into that a little bit on playback, which by the way, I recommend everybody check it out. Playback.tv backslash five RSN, where we go through a lot of breakdowns. Um, I'm curious to see Jimmy and Caleb for, for this reason. Jimmy likes playing with guys uh, who have high confidence levels. And we saw this pl the play out in the Boston series. And obviously it didn't play out in the Denver series. There was a lot of reasons for that with Caleb. I, I thought that Denver's length really bothered him, Aaron Gordon and others. Also the altitude sickness he had, which led to the migraines early in that series, seemed to really take him out of it. They never really got him back into it. But I, I just think you could see Jimmy's confidence in Caleb growing over the course of that postseason. And we know that Caleb, if he's here, is going to close games. I just I feel that's pr pretty damn sure thing, even if he's not a starter. So I want to see what that looks like with the two of them. Now that now that there's a little bit more trust in Caleb, we've talked about the ISO ability that may come forward this season. Um, there is some duplicate of skill there, which is one of the positives when Jimmy misses time. Um, part of the trust level in Caleb uh, that's beneficial to the Heat is that Jimmy can miss time. And that Caleb can do some of those things if he has to fill in. If you say he's not a starter, but he fills in for Jimmy at the three. Uh, but I do want to see what the two of them look like. Brady, you're up. So I will say, I think I was going to go in a different direction, but you didn't give me a good pass uh, to, to link my name yeah. together. But um, I'll say, I think in turn, like to, to, for the back end of you, kind of your description of Jimmy and Caleb, like Caleb filling in for Jimmy. Well, there's a guy that could potentially fill in for Caleb, and that's Jaime. Jaime Hawkins. And I was going to go in a different direction and say, to your point about Caleb potentially not starting, if he's coming off the bench, can Caleb and Jaime operate together? And that's why I think they're an interesting duo is for the fact that I've been saying, I, and, and Ethan, I know we talked about it a lot, it, it, the isolation stuff and the offensive kind of handing him more of the keys to kind of do a little bit more offensively, um, maybe in pick and rolls and stuff. Can you do that enough to like make lineups work off the bench when you have maybe Caleb at the two and then Jaime mm -hmm. at the three? And then whoever your front court is after that, I just think the Caleb and Jaime thing could move a needle a little bit. And kind of like I said before about Richardson guarding uh, on ball and Jimmy playing off ball, almost like the light version of that is Caleb guarding on ball with Jaime playing off ball, because that's yeah. kind of been his skill in college was that's why there was so many Jimmy comparisons. He's maybe can get picked on in isolation, but he's really smart. High IQ knows where to be. could kind of jump passing leads at times. So defensively, it could make sense offensively I'm I'm still questioning how it'll look specifically but I think it's a lot on Jaime how his spot up jumper looks and I think that's gonna be the question I've been saying if Jaime is playing if he's in a heat jersey next season doesn't get traded I think he plays and mm -hmm. I actually think his jumper surprises people I think his spot up jumper may be a little better than we're giving him credit for coming out of college I just think in, in terms of how they develop it and how they utilize them he's gonna get some open looks so I just thought playing off the Jimmy Caleb thing, it's almost like the, the light version of that with Jaime and, and Caleb. All right. Now, Alex, you're already disqualified, so I don't know if you're, you're going to actually play by the <laughs> rules here. But you've been given Caleb and, and Jaime to play off of. Um, All right. Go ahead. I can work with that. Um, before I get into that, I just want to say I forgot to throw in Jovic into my cop-out answer from before because he is definitely in that category of spacing bigs. <laughs> who might have something with Jimmy off the That bench. makes no difference Again, for this answer, though. So that's no, no, no. I just wanted to say, you know, because people are going to say, why did you throw Jovic in there? You know, is he not a shooting big? And everybody wants Jovic to play. And one of the, one of those front court players are going to pop with Jimmy, at, at least one, I think. We just don't know how that front court rotation is going to play out. Anyways, back to what we were um, talking about. Uh, my combo here is going to be Kyle and Jaime Hakez. I, I think Kyle is going to be, if he's here, um, I think more likely than not, he's going to be coming off the bench, I, whether it's 
Tyler starting or Dame starting, I think Kyle's going to be coming off the bench. Um, I don't think they need him to start anymore. And I think he, they got better production and more consistent production uh, from him when he was coming off the bench and kind of um, lifting some of those bench units. I, I think, you know, you can serve his minutes that way. Um, and I think that's going to be kind of a, a, a theme that, you know, is there throughout the season if he's still on the roster is Kyle's doing, you know, the, the expectations are not going to be there anymore, mm -hmm. right? So I just think him coming off the bench is going to be like a nice little change of pace and people are – it's not going to be so tension-filled with, oh, this guy was supposed to be the third best player. And so I think him and, and Jaquez could be kind of a fun combo there just because – and and to Brady's point, you know, having Caleb and Jaquez attacking off the wings with Kyle running the show could be fun. And again, with a, maybe a space – um, a spacing big out there. Like, those could be some fun units, man. I think um, right now they've kind of got a roster where we're not exactly sure how that rotation is going to pan out. But if Hawkins is in there in those bench units with Kyle, I, I could see them being an interesting tandem there. Like, Kyle was doing that in Toronto as well. Mm -hmm. he, he was somebody who would lift up their bench units, and he did it for the Heat last season uh, to a lesser degree. I, I, could still, I could see the Heat's bench units being pretty fun. All right, I'm going to make things easy on Brady here. I'm going to pair Kyle with somebody. So I was debating whether to pair him with, say, Joel Embiid in Philadelphia after a buyout or, or perhaps Kawhi Leonard with the Clippers after a buyout. But I'm going to pair his contract with Dame Lillard's uh, so that basically we can move to the next and we can, we can get to Brady where he can play off of, of Dame perhaps. Um, I, I – look – Obviously, if they don't get Dame, uh, I agree with you. I think that Dame, that Kyle's role is going to be leading the bench units, uh, probably playing 50 to 60 games, probably 15 to 20 minutes a night, sometimes maybe carrying a little bit more if they need him to. But, I, again, I still think the most likely scenario is that uh, he ends up getting moved. If not for Dame directly, then in another sort of corresponding deal uh, that we look at. So just to be kind here, you said I didn't give you a good pass. I'm going with Kyle and Dame. It's contracts. Go ahead, Brady. Okay, so I, I don't want to be a bad teammate either, and I don't want to keep repeating the same names either. So I'm going to go with Damian Lillard and Haywood Highsmith because okay. I think if Damian Lillard is in a Miami Heat jersey next season, Haywood Highsmith, I think, is starting at the four. Mm -hmm. So I think they make a lot of sense together in, in terms of he makes he can make up for a lot of things he does defensively. You're talking about a lot of guys in that starting lineup. Uh that need the ball in their hands or want the ball in their hands. Haywood Highsmith's not that guy. Haywood Highsmith is not a guy that's going to be demanding the ball. He's somebody that's going to sit in the corner. He's going to set screens. He's going to roll to the basket and he's going to repeat that over and over again. And then he's going to go, he's going to stand there on an inbound and he's going to press you 94 feet. Like that is the guy that you want next to Damian Lillard in a regular season. So I just think they make a lot of sense and kind of balance each other out in a way. Um, and it's funny because we keep talking about all these, I, I mean, I, I've repeated this so many times, but the, more we talk about the seat roster, they have so many front court guys. Like we could go on and on about these combos that they have next to Bam, behind Bam, this and that. This is not something we're used to talking about. It's usually Bam and that's it. Now we have all these options to talk about, but I think specifically Haywood makes the most sense at a starting forward Dame here. So that's the that's the combo I'm gonna go with. All right. For an office said you guys wanted a four, huh? Here's five of them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Damon Highwood. Damon Damon Highwood. Damon Haywood. Uh, Alex, you're up. So I can pick from one of those two, right? That's I mean, uh, that, I, I think I've explained the game properly here. So, yeah. <laughs> well, your answer was a weird one. I didn't think that was – I thought that was kind of above the rules too, Damon and Kyle. Like, they're not I mean, Damon and Kyle together. could end up playing together too. It's possible. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Possible? I guess it's possible. I don't know if it's likely. <laughs> Anyways, um, look, I'm just going to go with the obvious one here, Damon Bam. It, it's it's the one we've talked about before. Um, I've already gone with the obscure enough combos here that I feel like I can go back to this kind of easy mainstream answer. Damon Bam is going to be an insane combo if it ends up happening. I don't even think you got to see the real potential of it when they play together um, mm -hmm. for Team USA just because he was going through the injury stuff, I think, with the abdomen or whatever it was around 2021. Um, and he kind of wasn't himself. And so I, I think Dame, a healthy Dame with Bam, not to mention the other guys on this team, the coaching, I think that Dame Bam partnership is going to be what extends this Jimmy window. I think, you know, we saw, we talked on, on the last podcast about how he's going to age if he ends up, I mean, if and when he ends up on the heat. I think that's part of it. Like, not only the off-ball stuff that's going to unlock his game as he ages, I think the Dame and Bam partnership 
it's just going to be so money that it's it's going to be easy for Dane to to you know as as the years go on. Like he's such a dynamic screener and roller. Obviously, a guy who is a huge threat. You know, if he's in the uh, middle of the floor inside the arc as a short roll threat, like obviously he's got the um, the short mid range jumper. He, he's I think the one thing Bam is going to have to improve on here when it comes to that partnership is kind of the touch with some of the other sorts of shots, um, the, the little push shots and stuff uh, that maybe he's not taking as much. But in general, I think there's going to be so many dunks that it, that stuff's not even going to matter that much. There's going to be a whole lot of dunks, whether off lobs, uh, dump downs. Dame is just going to demand so much uh, from the defense that Bam is going to get a lot of looks. And I think also defenses are worried about Bam as a roller. So there's going to be times where Dame finds the opening. It's it's going to be an incredible partnership and it's going to also take off a lot of pressure from Jimmy. I just think that's kind of, it's going to be the key to this whole thing. Once he, you know, excuse me, if he ends up here. You actually just gave us a good idea for a playback. We should, we should go back and look at the Dame uh, Bam reps during their run together on Team USA. So mark that one down. We can do that one this week. Um, all right, well, I'm going to close with a hopeful one for Heat fans because this is the best possible case scenario. Damon Tyler. What if they are able to keep Tyler Hero, which is what he wants? Um, I think it's what they want at this point. Portland doesn't seem to want him. There may be other ways of attaining the picks necessary, particularly if Dame's value decreases, which is what I think is going to happen as the season gets closer, even into the season. Um, and then you're looking at Dame and Tyler potentially playing together. Now, I've said you know, that I still don't think that should be your starting backcourt. I still think Josh Richardson should be the starting two for this team because it fits best. Um, and we know that Tyler wanted to be a starting two. He sees himself as a starting two. He is a starting two, but I just wonder if he wants to be here bad enough, okay, and they they find a way to pull that off, to put him on a potential championship contender year in, year out, okay, where he can be a big part of it, but he doesn't have to carry, um, would he be willing to go back to a six-man role where, honestly, he would win six-man of the year again, Um and he would play a ton of minutes with Dame Lillard anyway, with the staggered lineups that we've discussed. He'd still play his 30 to 32, 33. Um, or I, they I, start together. Or they start together. I, 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 and look, if you're going to put your five best on the floor, that's what everybody will say that you do. But if you could bring Tyler Hero off the bench, where you're taking, say, Jimmy out, and Tyler replaces him, and you're plugging Tyler in with Bam and Dame for a period of time, right? And you've got the options, uh, again, of going smaller with Josh or, again, going bigger with some of the guys. They have so many options on this roster. Even after they make the trade, they will have options on this roster because we've talked about them plugging the holes potentially with a Christian Wood or a Kelly Oubre uh, or others, which is, again, we're going to do more podcasts on those as we go forward. He, he doesn't have to start to be impactful, he probably will be more impactful if he doesn't start, and he still would get critical 15 to 20, 25 minutes with Dame Lillard on a regular basis. I'll just leave it for the two of you guys. What do we think that – we haven't discussed that a lot. We've got we've touched on it at times. What do we think, Brady? What do you think that would look like? I mean, we touched on it a little bit, but it's – I think it's – <laughs> many of us aren't giving it the credit that it deserves. I think, like, we're overlooking the fact that it's like – Putting a, I keep saying, like, giving Spo that much talent is not going to go wrong. Like, I can't see that going in a bad direction where he has too much talent to deal with and there's one ball on the floor and they're going to have issues. That's not happening. Like, that, especially when I was talking about Haywood starting <laughs> with Dame in Miami. Imagine if Tyler's there too. Yeah, Haywood starting at the four. He's a like, staple. He's a staple at the four because he's Could be staple to Tyler, literally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think the fact that they could, they could find ways to score – the ways that they could play off each other. I think there's ideas of the fact we talked about Dane playing off ball. And I don't think Tyler gets the respect that he deserves as an off ball player. Like his, his spot up numbers have pretty much always been there that he could play off that as well. You could play off secondary actions after off the catch there, and he could roll into another pick and roll. Like there's so many different things you can do with those two guys. And I'm glad he went to Tyler because really quickly, I did want to throw out one more combo mm. uh, because I was waiting for Tyler to get mentioned. How about Tyler and Thomas Bryant? Like if there is no Dane, 
I think like I think back to all like the combos and pick and rolls that he played with off the bench, like Deadman and the Zellers and and Orlando Robinson and all these guys. They were always like really good pick and roll combos for some reason. Like those two man mm-hmm. combos always had really good advanced numbers. And now you're having probably the most talented one that you've had. And especially it's gonna be if it's gonna be elite for the first like five weeks because every time they get a big man in the as a backup, they look good really early on. So it'll look really elite for like two months. But I think that's just an interesting one, just because he's always plays well with those like slower paced bigs that he can kind of operate with. So that's one to look out for. I, I just wanna say. I plotted that entire thing with the whole Lowry thing with uh, with Dame, knowing that Tyler would get back to me with Dame, so that we we could close with that. So see, that's seeing the floor. Wow! The, I I saw the that's floor, seeing the big had, picture, and we I ended up closing with picture. Thomas Bryant. <laughs> to, 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 yeah, yeah. And then somehow you screwed it up with Thomas Bryant. All right. Thanks to Brady. Thanks to Alex. Thanks to our sponsors. Sponsors are Life Insurance, uh, Car Insurance, Celebrity, Lynette, Insurance by Lynette.com, Better Edge, Prize Picks. Again, we'll do more playbacks. I really like the Bam Dame idea for playback. I think we should do that one. Uh, that, that's a good one. All right. Have a good day, everybody.